Hello, and welcome back to bikeride.com bike reviews. I'm Scott, and we're back behind the handlebars with another review for you. Many e-bikes require some assembly after you open the box, but today we're looking at a flat pack style bike from Van Powers. The City Vancher is a discreet urban e-bike with an aluminum frame inspired by road bikes. It's a unique frame that uses tenon and mortise joints to link pieces together rather than traditional welding. The unique attachment method means you can save a few bucks and assemble the bike yourself or shell out for the fully assembled version, which ships in a larger box similar to most e-bikes. So is it worth the trouble to save the 50 bucks for an assembled frame? Or is this going to be more hassle than it's worth? Plus, with top speeds over 20 miles per hour, we're going to need to see how well this bike's joints hold up. Let's dive into the City Vancher from Van Powers with a complete assembly before we move on to testing. Let's go ride some bikes. So what is the Van Powers City Vancher? When you first catch a glimpse of the City Vancher, you'll probably find its sleek looks don't reveal the hidden electric power motoring the bike along. With a discrete battery pack integrated into the down tube, only the 350 watt hub motor on the rear wheel gives it away. The light 34 pound bike has a slim aluminum frame, similar to modern road bikes, and it's coupled with 700C high pressure tires and hydraulic Tektro brakes. It's speedy and maneuverable, with the power to slow down quickly in urban traffic. It's a unique bike, not only because of the way its frame is joined together and can be completely disassembled, but also because of the Gates CDX drivetrain, which reduces maintenance and extends belt life compared to a traditional chain. We've looked at similar models from other brands, but the City Vancher is a competitively priced unit in comparison. Let's get into the pros and cons and see how this unit stacks up against the competition. Our first pro is the fact that this is a lightweight and maneuverable bike. One of the first things that I noticed about the City Vancher was its reduced weight and slim footprint. In a world of monster e-bikes, I'm continually refreshed when an e-bike can slide under the radar, bringing you the same kind of riding experience I love about traditional bikes, with an electrifying jolt of power. So I was happy when I first put pedal to foot and felt the lightweight nature of the Vancher. It's light at 34 pounds with a low profile frame and slim tires on a traditional sized rim. These attributes mean it feels like a standard bike as you lift it onto a rack or maneuver it unpowered upstairs or in confined spaces. If you already commute and store a bike, you know you can fit this bike in the same area. So compared to large cumbersome e-bikes, the Vancher has a significantly reduced footprint. When you start riding, the same lightweight attributes offer excellent ride quality on pavement and hard packed gravel. Quickly accelerating and stopping with the ability to dip and weave around obstacles or through traffic. Keep the venture fast and fun. Now we can move on to pro number two. This bike is stylish and discreet. The City Venture has some good looks coupled with a minimalist design. I love the hidden battery which makes the bike sleek and discreet. When riding and storing a bike in the city, having an e-bike that isn't screaming for attention can keep you safer from thieves and vandals. Other than helping to hide the bike among other commuters on the bike rack, those sleek looks also turn heads on a ride. I was just impressed with the aesthetics of the bike and the way touch points like grips and Tektro levers blend well with the image of the cycle and offer seamless operation. I also really like the option to add a second battery and it's disguised as a water bottle. Stylish and discreet. Now let's take a look at pro number three. This is the price point and the features that are offered. The City Venture offers an excellent package with similar specifications and performance to other bikes that can come in nearly double its price. It does not feature the most advanced materials and components, but for items like the Gates carbon drivetrain and integrated color LCD display, you get some quality components and styling that really bring great value for the price. Now we gotta take a look at some of the things that didn't start so well. And starting off with con number one, we've got a misleading battery indicator. The battery level on the City Venture is displayed as a five level battery icon, similar to many other e-bikes. As I progressed through the range test, I was initially impressed with how the bike offered good power. 
and the battery level seemed slow to drain. As we neared the 14 mile mark, however, I was shocked to see it still displayed full battery. I was concerned that this was more of a trick than truth, and before long the battery fell down to three bars, or about halfway through the icon. A difference in power was noticeable, and when faced with a hill, the bike was sluggish compared to the initial capacity. Fast forward a few miles more and the power output continued to dwindle, losing energy until we had two bars remaining. Now this is where things get interesting. When we reached the final battery bar, the power was low. It started to get hard to feel if the bike offered any assistance, but the last battery bar did not flicker or disappear. We reached a point of no return at 24 miles, with the bike still displaying a battery bar and appearing to turn on and function, but the motor offered no assistance. It was a frustrating result and would result in a lot of range anxiety from a user, with no clear way to determine how much juice you have left in the battery and a battery indicator that seems destined to let you down. It's a bike I would not push to the limit. Now for con number two. We have a loss of power while riding, and this is similar to our last con. This involves the bike's performance as the battery level wanes during extended rides. With a total range of 24 miles, the bike is bringing a similar level of performance that is in line with its competitors. Yet this bike is tuned in a specific manner that is frustrating to operate on longer rides. The controller offers good power and pep at higher battery voltages, so when you start your ride, you'll be zipping at a reasonable speed. The bike falters as you cover more ground, and the battery dwindles. The bike is already ill-equipped to climb hills with its single-speed drivetrain, but it is almost useless on grades at a low battery level. Even on flat ground, the difference in motor ability and output is noticeable and discouraging during a long trip. Now, for our third and final con, we have the hill climbing ability. The City Vancher features some new age technology, and while it brings convenience to the user, it also limits the bike's ability to climb any significant grade. Its best chance is with a full battery, as it conquered our medium hill climb with some help from the rider. But I was out of the seat and applying power to get the bike up the hill. Compared with a more powerful 500 watt or 750 watt motor, the bike is best suited to more gentle terrain and areas that do not include steep or repeated hills. So what does it do best? It's best suited as a discreet urban bike for places with relatively flat terrain. The City Venture brings stylish and discreet power to your daily rides. It's not powering you up a steep incline, but it offers enough pep to power you along gentle terrain. With a lightweight design, it's a pleasure to pedal in most circumstances, bringing plenty of maneuverability and speed. Road bikers in particular will be accustomed to the 700C wheel set, Tektro hydraulic brakes, and a body forward riding position. Like other belt-driven single speed bikes in the category, it's an efficient design that offers a natural riding experience. If you're looking for an e-bike that doesn't show it, this could be the one for you. So who should buy this bike? The City Venture brings an efficient and sleek package at an affordable price point. It would be attractive for urban users who enjoy biking or already use a bike for transport. The Venture's ability to add speed and assistance over distance or on gentle hills would be welcome in the city. Plus, with a belt drive, you'll have less maintenance and chances of being sidelined on your commute. The bike also slides under the radar. It's appealing for aesthetics and practicality in an urban setting. Whether for pleasure or commuting, the bike seems ideally suited to the city. I love being able to move and ride the bike in the same way I would a regular bike, and the lightweight and slim silhouette makes it easy to move around obstacles and transport when it's not in use. So what are some reasons to look elsewhere? A limited range and ability to climb hills will not offer users who need these attributes enough power and capacity. If your current commute features multiple hills, steep grades, or would have you facing a climb at low battery levels, you'll want to look at other options. Most of the issues I faced with this bike centered around how the battery level was displayed and limited power from the battery after 50% of a discharge. You should also look for other options if you plan to push past a 15 mile trip while using high assist levels. Now let's talk about the unboxing and assembly. The City Venture is a unique bike because it can be sent to you in a flat pack style box and requires complete assembly. 
or you can shell out a little bit of cash and receive it assembled similar to most e-bikes. We received a version to assemble and took on the challenge. Be sure to check out the full video to follow along and watch that. The bike is well labeled and stored in a box with protected material. It comes with complete instructions and tools, and we completed the assembly in about an hour. Assembly required only simple Allen keys and wrenches, and it's relatively straightforward despite having 25 plus steps. The assembly would be easy for anyone with experience using tools and working on bikes. Whether it's worth the $50 is up to you. Check out the video and let me know what you think. The big bonus of the assembly process is that you get to know how the bike goes together and you get to see what's inside. So if you ever have a problem, you know you can get it replaced. The design of the frame is fascinating and after connecting the pieces and torquing everything down, it feels just as secure as a traditionally welded frame. Talking about that frame and the bike's geometry, the City Vancher bike features a different frame style and a unique feature that sets it apart from all other bikes on the market. They chose to use a tenon and mortise construction method for the Vancher. Now the brand claims that it reduces the number of frames rejected in the construction process and offers superior durability. It also means they can deliver the bike in a smaller package and you can assemble the entire device yourself. The frame when it's assembled is solid and unique. While testing the unit, I found no issue with the construction style or its ability to withstand the abuse of riding. And I found the assembly straightforward for those with advanced knowledge about bikes. The Vancher's frame features a straight and relatively tall top tube, so it has a very similar frame style to a traditional road bike. It is also the kind of frame that's going to have you in a body forward and more athletic biking position and is going to require you to swing your weight leg up and over the back of that bike to mount it. The bike is light and performs well in its intended environment, so the design is a win on all accounts. Now let's take a look at the motor. The 350 watt rear hub motor seems to be undersized for the unit. While it gives it a good shot, the issue is that the motor simply lacks the power and torque to efficiently climb hills without the assistance of a traditional geared drivetrain. While the tuning means initial rides will be peppy, the bike becomes disappointing over distances as the motor quickly lost the initial pep as the battery voltage dropped. Overall, I found that performance was similar to other bikes in the same genre and motor size. On flat ground and mellow hills, the bike operates just fine, but when you hit a serious incline, you can find the bike's limits quickly. Looking at the cockpit and control. Minimal and streamlined are two words that pop into my mind when looking over the cockpit of the City Vancher. Brake levers and straight lock-on grips are simple and functional, and a three-button control pad. The main display for the unit is hidden in the stem and it offers a small but highly visible color LCD screen. The screen is also minimal, offering an odometer, trip info, and current assist level, with a simple five bar battery diagram in the top corner. You can cycle through three sets of trip info with the M button or move through assist levels with the up and down buttons. The bike has some advanced settings, but offers little assistance for changing these items. The unit offers a relatively small 7 amp hour or 252 watt hour battery with LG cells. The battery is concealed in the down tube and installed on the bike in a semi-permanent manner. This means you could remove the battery, but it would require disassembling the entire bike, which is not easy. The brand claims the bike will travel up to 50 miles on a single charge. Our range test slowed slightly less than half of that range on max assist for a total of 24 miles. The bike only travels approximately 18 miles an hour comfortably, with the factory assist level set to five from the factory. So it'd be hard to see someone willingly riding the bike in such a low assist level like one or two to stretch out that range and reach the claimed 50 miles. We also experienced a lot of range anxiety due to how the battery level is monitored and displayed. Overall, the battery was underpowered, and unless you intend to add the optional second battery, this bike is dedicated to commutes of less than 20 miles round trip. Our range test, we achieved a total distance of 24.10 miles over a total time of one hour and 33 minutes, and that included 722 feet of elevation gain. 
When it comes to the charger, battery removal, and keys, charging is performed by a 42 volt, two amp output charger, which tops the battery off from 0% in approximately three hours. Unlike other e-bikes, which offer a way to remove the battery for charging away from the bike, the City Vancher has only one charging method. You must plug the charger into the bike's external charging port. This means the bike has to be brought into a dry location for charging. It's a letdown, but it's integral in the space-saving design of the bike. The charger is generic and of a standard speed. The short charge time is more related to the small battery size than having a speedy charger. The Gates carbon drive drivetrain that we see on the unit is a unique set that we've only seen one or two of before. The key benefits of a belt drive system like this are reduced maintenance, less noise, and no grease or chain loop. The drivetrain is a single speed with a planetary geared rear hub motor. This results in an effortless ride and no ability to change the gearing. The bike can operate well within the speed limit of 20 miles per hour on flat ground, and with high pedal efficiency, it's quick to accelerate and pleasant underfoot. A cadence sensor controls the motor, making it less intuitive than units that would integrate a torque sensor. Now taking a look at the brakes. The bike is equipped with Tektro M285, and it's a reliable hydraulic brake. The bike can stop quickly due to the 180 millimeter rotor on the front and rear and it's essential for urban streets as conditions can change swiftly. The bike was slower to stop in our braking test. This probably has a lot more to do with the reduced tire footprint than the heavy fat tire bikes that we usually test. The brakes on our test unit worked well and were well sized and complemented the bike's performance. Now taking a look at the wheels and tires. The bike features aluminum alloy rims and 700C by 28C Kenda tires. The bike is very relatable for anyone accustomed to urban or road bikes with thin, high pressure tires that are pleasant to ride on pavement and hard packed gravel. It's capable of high speeds and they require a little bit more care to maintain traction than the enormous plus side tires that we often see. The benefits of speed and maneuverability are easy to feel immediately though and more than enough to compensate for the few restrictions. The bike and wheels are intended for pavement, and I can see them getting slippery fast in wet conditions, but we didn't have the chance to test them out. The contact points on the City Venture are minimal, but they're well chosen. Starting with the grips. Some simple lock-on grips are a welcome sight and don't slip on the bars as you ride. They offer a fine grip, but they are a budget item. I had no issue, and I would prefer them to a set of contoured leather grips any day. Now taking a look at the saddle. Our black City Venture came with the matching black Cell Royale saddle. It's a simple and comfortable seat for short and mid-length trips, and it gave no trouble or discomfort on our range test. Overall, I thought that it was a good match for the bike. And finally, looking at the pedals. The City Venture ships with a simple set of Welgo flat cleated pedals. They offer reasonable traction, but less than a pedal featuring more pegs. The simple cleats are definitely a budget item that could be swapped for more comfort and traction. In conclusion, the bike is lightweight and maneuverable. The Van Power City Vancher is an urban e-bike that really breaks the mold, allowing the user to get involved in the build process and it's very interesting, but maybe more trouble than it's worth. It's an affordable e-bike with some great features for its price point, but it also suffers issues as the battery loses power. Despite some drawbacks, this bike offers those with short commutes or who simply want to electrify their urban ride a great way to get going without breaking the bank. Plus, the bike is light and exhilarating a ride on its 700C wheel set. Is this bike for you? Check out the detailed specs at bikeride.com and see user and expert reviews. You can also check out other great e-bikes and see them rated to find your perfect match. Do you have a question or something you want to say? Let me know in the comments and we'll start getting you some answers. If you liked the video, give us a like and subscribe so we can keep on bringing you the latest e-bike reviews and news. I'm Scott with bikeride.com. I want to say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the ride.